if white Christianity was real, dot, dot, dot. Or should we say it like this? If white Christianity and their Jesus was real, or should we say if white Jesus and their Christianity was real? You get the point, right? But here, here we caught this meme. This meme was on circulation on one of the platform things, WhatsApp platforms, and we saw it right there. And you know, there's a few comments on it, so forth and so on. As you can see here in the red cipher, the red circle, at the top it says, listen to Naya Bingi. Well, what does Naya Bingi and Tarastafari? You know, especially for the youths, the new generation, we need to have a reasonment on Naya Bingi. Have to just heal up um, Ja B, Ja Bunny. Something I heard recently in one of his um, one of his pod, I call it a podcast, but one of his um, how can you say one of his posts on the YouTube's and everything. We talk about the the age or the time of Naya Bingi. You know, really, I see there's a change going on amongst the mansions. This is not something that is you know, may be received by those who are in certain mansions. I would say of the mansion of Naya Bingi. Yes, I and I, that was a mansion that I and I come into and also pass through, you know what I mean? And I give thanks to the elders, you know, even as the scripture says, you know, double honors, you know what I mean? To those, those elders, the worthy elders, you know, in the teaching and the doctrine. And, and they really did give I and I, I say I and I because there was others that came forth. So Naya Bingi, yeah. Naya Bingi was one of the first, I would say, of the mansions, right? The gatherings, the mansions, you know? I think one thing that's popular about Naya Bingi, and this is one thing that they say too, they say that basically it, um, how can I say? We're looking up a little bit on Naya Bingi. In fact, we got to do a whole video. Let's do a whole video on Naya Bingi, yeah? You know, from the roots of Naya Bingi, what does Naya Bingi mean? Naya Bingi's relationship to Rastafari. Why is Naya Bingi, according to one um, one research, you know, still doing some research. Research, first of all, from our recollection of trotting Naya Bingi. That's why I'll point out that Naya Bingi, you know, especially here in Broke Kings in Brooklyn, back in the days in the, I said the early 90s, the late 80s, early 90s, you know, trotting through Naya Bingi. It was a Naya Bingi house. In fact, just today was on a trot, you know, Amy Shashali, and um, you pass by an old Naya Bingi house on, on Halsey, 157. Some of mine and mine, you know, from that generation might know the place I'm speaking about. But um, I said, listen to Naya Bingi, but here, here, listen to Ras Ayadonis. Listen to Yadin right here. <laughs> so if heaven was real, this meme says if heaven was real, right, it says white people would have kept the Bible far away from black people like they do with land and wealth hmm very interesting meme you know a very interesting meme right here and i must say that just reading this meme right here and then seeing the full of full i think it was a tick tock i don't know what the rest of the meme said but this is what it brought forward now it's interesting because in naya Bingi, at least from i and i groundation you know the bible has a lot to do with it but the bible in a different way as one of the elders say like we read the bible where well, we read it a different way Right. And all the free, you know, all the free black people, you know, what I mean, the self emancipating <laughs> black folks, you know, at least of I and I people, you know, I'm speaking mainly for black American Rastafari, you know, I got to speak for I and I base, you know, but also to I and I brothers, you know, in the other regions of the diaspora. Right, and the Jaman, Yaman, or some would say the Benjamin, yes? So if heaven was real, white people would have kept the Bible far away from black people. Well, you know, actually, if you really study and you know the real chronology of things, put things in proper order, they actually did. They actually, they actually, actually did, right? They actually did keep the Bible far away from black people. Need we do a vlog, a research, and kind of show you some of the research? I mean, you can actually look it up for yourself. You know, that the Bible originally, right, black people, I'm just speaking generally here, the black people who were brought all across the trans-Ethiopian ocean slave trade, falsely called the transatlantic slave trade. It wasn't called the Atlantic, it was called the Ethiopian Ocean. Check, check. When we was brought over here, right, uh, Willie Lynch, how to make a slave paper, although it is a kind of a, um, it's somewhat anachronistic 
in a sense. It was kind of written later on, but reflecting on what was done earlier on. So it's like a later day document, right? Especially in the language, when you study the language. Baba Dick Gregory was right about that. But what it says there, it shows their mindset, right? What was their mindset? You know, what was that satanic mindset of them? To destroy our language. Right? To cut us off from our own language and to make sure that we would have a poor understanding of this new language. It's a controlled language section right, of the short version of the Wooly Lynch paper, How to Make a Slave. You need to check in and we need to reason on that right there as well. Because the language in the beginning was the word. You know, first is the logo, so the logistics. So let's study the word right here. Right? Where it says white people would have kept the Bible far away from black people. Now, I know a lot of ones and ones talk about like Africa, what occurred on the continent of Ethiopia that later on after the Belgium conference was called, um, renamed actually, by force, you know, Africa, you know, and we celebrate that, but we don't really think about, well, how did it, how did it get here? It's like people look at this particular meme right here and say, that's right. Look, they took the land, they gave black people the Bible and they took the land. Maybe that happened over there in Africa. But now speaking to our people who were sold by the Africans, right? Sometimes so by their own people, you know, so by the Hamites and, and even some, some Israelites, you know? Yes, yes. I mean, look in the Bible. I mean, the first incident of one being sold into bondage or what one could call pseudonymously slavery, it was Joseph. It was Joseph. By, by who? By his own brothers. So it showed that we, as people, just basic human nature can do a lot of things, and specifically we as the once lost now found. But they did keep the Bible far away from black people. They did. Because when black people read the Bible initially, that's why I want to call this particular vlog right here, if white Christianity <laughs> and white Jesus or in their Jesus was real, right? it goes beyond just the so-called color, but white Christianity definitely, that's the institution. They, they whitewash things because the real image of so-called Christ and Christos and Christianity, the real image was black from the very beginning. See, this, this is where this is pseudo, this pseudo kind of consciousness going on. It, it's kind of like for immediate gratification, you know, like a lot of these memes, a lot of times are immediate gratification. I think that we don't enjoy them too. I mean, we enjoy this one so much that we said, all right, let's do a little vlog on this one right here and just, just comment and reason on it as we sometimes do with some of the Habarim, you know, one-on-one -on -one or, you know, in I and I, you know, particular gatherings, you know, but to share this with, you know, our wider family, Miss Pacha, the Miss Pacha, right? So white people did keep the Bible far away from black people. But what it should have said is that would have kept the true understanding away from black people. But what they did first with black people is get them into white Christianity. Once you got them into white Christianity, which is a form of insanity, right? Once you got them into white, I know some are going to drop the white and just say Christianity as a whole, but those are some, either they're foo foo or they're on some particular, they, they are a provocateur. I, I want to put that out because you got a lot of pro black agent provocateurs out there, right? They know some now, they drop some nods, but they, they have an agenda, you know what I mean? Especially vis a vis. You know, those aspects of our story, like Christianity or being Jews and Israelites, you know, that, that, that aspect of our story, a lot of them want to go to white man consensus scholarship. And then on the next level, they want to be all this pro-black. You know, you really can't do both of them like that. Right. But if heaven was real, white people would have kept the Bible far away from black people. But they did. This is the first part of this meme. See, a lot of people may not even understand what I'm saying, and they might say that we're wrong about this because they're just ignorant. They just don't know. You know, you just don't know. that You're saying that we're wrong by saying that the white people did keep the Bible far away from black people? Let's go back to some of the early examples when black people had managed to read or understand portions of the Bible. Look at all that revolutionary fervor that rose up. We, we have, of course, the, the Nat Turner as as one of the object lessons but there were other nat turner like situations and this is why here in these here americas especially this north country it was illegal it was a crime punishable by death for a black person to be taught how to read or handle the bible 
right? And that was enforceable upon the so-called black person that at that time the Negro and slave, slave or Slav, all that kind of name calling, right? And also upon white folks, if they were implicated, like if a white person was implicated somehow in teaching or giving a Bible to a black person back in those days, they could have risked and forfeited their life as well for that because that was a crime. Why? Because a white man was afraid based on the examples of those black people who did get a hold of a Bible. So you have to understand the stages. See, people don't understand the stages. There are stages to this. There are phases to this. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing something, whatever you're doing, if it's really important, it probably all can't be all done at once. It has to be done in stages. Many of you know that you have dreams and visions, things you want to do, and you know you have to first do this part, and then you do that part, right? And then somebody say, well, how do you get everything done? And they might think, could now they see you successful, but it wasn't that you just went from so-called rags to riches, but it was stages. You had to work hard. You had to save. You had to, you know what I mean? <laughs> it took time. So we're not looking at it, instead we're looking for a quick point of gratification. Yeah, that's right. If heaven was, heaven is real. <laughs> I know you're thinking like, what? What is Yadun saying? Yadon, what is Don? Yadun. <laughs> what is Yadun saying? Oh, heaven, heaven is real. It's just a sky. It's a sky. <laughs> Up there, above high. That's all. Heaven is real. Heaven, the sky. Now, now you mean you mean the fantasy stuff? You mean the insanity stuff? You mean the pretense to make believe like there's gonna be like you know Saint Peter at the pearly gates and, and and angels with wings and and clouds and and people walking around on the stage with fake clouds and everything? No, 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 no. All that's all that's. You, 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 need I tell you that that's fake? And it was fake yesterday, as it's even fake today. But heaven. What heaven represents is the sky. The sky. Like we say heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Earth and heaven. You get it? You get, you get what I'm saying here? You see, people who, are, who read this particular thing and say, that's right, if heaven was real. Because they are still in a white Christianity mentality. See, that's, that's a mental health issue. We're talking about mental health issues. Spiritually, psychologically, psycho-spiritually here, we're speaking about mental health issues right here. See, see we, we have to note this right here. Right? Heaven is real. I pause on that because people think, I know some of y'all are saying, what's wrong? Because you are stuck in the whitewash. It's in your mind. It's in you. You might not be going to church, you know, church and all of that, but it's already in you. It's like they say you could take the, the, the person out of this, but you can't take that out of the person. Like you could take a person out of like slavery, but you can't take the so-called slavery out the person easily. I say to you, right, you know, that you can't take the slavery out the person as easy as it was to take them out maybe physically, right, on a level. So people may stop going to church, stop reading the Bible, stop believing in all of the, you know, the catechisms and everything else like that. But, but <laughs> it's still in you. So when somebody says heaven is real, like when I say, well, heaven is real, some people get offended. That's why I have to say, well, heaven is real. It's just a sky up above. That's all. It's just a sky up above. The sky. You know the sky. Oh, oh look at the heavens. Oh, it's a sunny, it's sunny heavens. We say it's sunny sky. Sky, heaven, heaven, sky. You know, go go look up synonyms. They call synonyms, right? Look up what a synonym is. <laughs> not synonym, not synonym. <laughs> Not, you know, not what you eat synonym, synonyms, similar sounding, similar words, words that have like similar meanings, right? So we had to, we had to fact check this meme right here. Because a meme that a lot of ones, I have to say this, you know, because the truth is an offense, but it's not a sin. A lot of ones who still are on a low degree of consciousness, but might think they are woke, they woke, they woke folk, will look at this and say, that's right. And they won't even be thinking. You're not thinking about what you're saying. White people would have kept the Bible far away from black people. So tell me this, right? Riddle me this. Make this make sense, right? Why did they have a slave Bible for black people that cut out many, many, not many areas of the Bible that was like, it was like curated. It was so like curated. It was edited. It was a bridge version. A bridge version for the Negroes. 
I say this as somebody who's descendant of Negroes, you know, just to point that out right there. All right, you know, it's because in the earlier part right, of the enslavement of black people over here in these here Americas and Caribbean, and we can speak about what happened here in these here Americas, they found out when black folks started to read the Bible, before they put in that white Christianity doctrination. See, the white Christianity, that's the, that's the indoctrination. So even when you hear some folks, the pro-black folks, about oh, Christianity, Christianity, in this generalized kind of sense, right? they can't see the reality that it's white Christianity that has poisoned, you know what I mean, that has poisoned the bucket. You know what I mean? It's like they say one one rotten apple does what? You ever heard that before? One rotten apple. What does the one rotten apple do? Now many of us city folks may not even know what this statement means because you're not really in that environment. But you maybe you go to the store and maybe you you know you go to the produce section or whatever, and sometimes there's a rotten fruit. And usually in most stores they they they're quick. They, you know the people who serve there they're quick because that's that's business, that's money. You know what I mean? That's how they. Yeah, survive and everything. So they'll probably remove that. But you ever see sometime where one thing that is spoiled spoils something else? You know, I'm, I'm sure we all experience that. That's the idea of one rotten apple spoils a bunch. You know, because some say, Yadin, you know, just, you know, you go into these details and everything. Sometimes just go over some of the basics. So we're taking this basic. This is like a basic meme right here. Right? But it does have a point. So even though we are kind of fact checking this meme, we're not dismissing it as a meme. See, see, we're like His Majesty. And I'm with Hala Selassie. I'm not namesake. Some say, listen to Naya Bing. No, we say, listen to Hala Selassie. <laughs> mm. All right? Listen to Hala Selassie. You know, for the Rastafari especially and also for others. All right? You know, charity begins at home, at the Beta Rastafari, and it spreads abroad. Right? So let's just read to this meme just one time. If heaven was real, white people would have kept the Bible far away from black people, like they do with land and wealth. So tell me this, riddle me this. Do you think that they gave the Bible, that they willingly allowed black people to read the Bible when our ancestors first came over here? I think it was a couple of generations before we could so-called freely own and possess a Bible, but that was after they went through generations of indoctrination with white Christianity and with their Jesus, right? Their Kaiser, Kaiser Borgia, Khazar Borgia, right? Who some call Caesar Borgias, Kaiser Borgia. Got to do a vlog on that. Caesar Borgias, Kaiser, Khazar Borgia, Kaiser Borgia, or Caesar Borgia. Caesar Borgias or Kaiser, Khazar Borgia, right? So once they did that, right? And that's where the slave Bible comes in. Look up. Slave Bible. If you haven't looked up Slave Bible, look up Slave Bible. There might be some PDFs of it out there where you can download a PDF and you can kind of just click through it, right? And when you click through it, like have a regular Bible on the side, like regular King James Bible, and look through it and look at all the places they delete. Look at the deletions. See, what we need to do to reverse that curse right there, that consequence, is study these things, study to shoe ourselves approved. Right, that's a teaching, right? That's a teaching of His Majesty. We don't want no devil's philosophy. His Majesty says to us, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Uh-oh. So, Nayabingi, Rastafari, where you get your name from, Rasta, Rastafari, you get it from the Rastafari Kedamawi Hala Selassie. So, if you get your name from the Rastafari Kedamawi Hala Selassie, give us a teaching of His Majesty. So, His Majesty... Hala Selassie says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Say, so, uh-oh, wait, wait, wait. So there, here we have what might seem to be a cognitive dissonance. Why is it that Hala Selassie, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right, and those of that previous generation of blameless Ethiopians, the Israelites of Ethiopia, why did they have that view for nearly 3,600 years, more than 3,000 years, Right? But our experience over the past 400 years with the Bible and Christianity has been a total 180, totally opposite of the testimony of Haile Selassie and His Majesty east of the river now. Why is that? Does that say that the book, the Bible, is the bad thing? 
Does that say that even belief in Christ or Christianity or Judaism, whatever, is the bad thing? Does that say that that's the bad thing? If we recognize through the teaching of our King of Kings that these things were practiced in the only place in Africa that was not conquered by the same cracker European peckerwood, Gentile peckerwood, that, that did it everywhere else. He did it everywhere else throughout the continent. Why is that? There must have been something about that. Now, this is not to say that because people are, you know, practicing and faithful people as we say the Israelites of Ethiopia, you know, from that heritage were. You know, that's saying it was perfect. There was no, you know, falling short. No, we, we, we're not saying that. But we're saying that they were able to, to resist, right, being overcome, right, and put under the yoke, right, of whitewashed Christians. Now, I'm saying all of this. I'm not looking at after the rebellion. Right after the rebellion against Hala Selassie, after the the great transgression, I'm not I'm not looking at what has occurred in this reasoning here concerning the Bible. We're looking at the past and bringing it forward to our present time, right? But when I'm speaking about Ethiopia, I'm speaking about it from let's say the time of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba and their son Menelik. Nay, let's go to Moses, Moshe, and his Ethiopian wife, huh? We, we could go to Genesis, you know, earlier, but let's just, to a relationship, right, between Hebrews, Israelites, and Ethiopians, right? So we have Moshe and his Ethiopian wife. We have King Solomon, the queen of Sheba, right? Even Yeshua HaMoshe, the Messiah in the New Testament quotes that. But we're going all the way up to 1974, 1975. From 1974... 1975 to the present time concerning Ethiopia put a big fat red question mark, right? Because we're in the interregnum. You know what interregnum is? It's between the rule and the reigning of a, of a king or between the rule, the reigning of the proper government. So we don't have our proper government, right? It's not the messianic government, not the proper government, right, that we have. But we, you know, we, we, we'll deal with the governments that we have to deal with, hopefully wisely, right? So I want to point that out because what, we, what one see in the Orthodox Church today, we cannot co-sign it as we can what has occurred prior to 1975 going back, right, in Christian times or in Messianic Nazarene times to the first century to the Ethiopian official. Right. And then in Judaic or Hebraic or Israelite times concerning the children, of the Ethiopians going back to Solomon, the Queen of Sheba. Actually, we can also go back to Moses and his Ethiopian wife. Right. So there is a total different view of the Bible. Right. By his imperial majesty, Hala Selassie, and that generation that we get in our history than many of us, we black people over here in America. And if we study our ancestors who are doing their research, not even having the means that we have of the technology and everything else, we're doing their research all in the roaring 20s. I got to emphasize the roaring 20s because here in 2022, we should be looking at uh, 1920, 1922. What was going on over here with our movements? How can we learn? My, this is the wise people learn from the past. Even Marcus Messiah Garvey talked about, you know, like, you know, a tree without its roots and how important, you know, our past is, right? And people talk about, oh, the past is the past. Leave the past in the past. But then, like hypocrites, you know, they'll have some like Memorial Day or Veterans Day or like the birthday of the so-called country of America and they'll, they'll celebrate these. Th you, you know what I'm saying? You see the hypocrisy, right? But let's speak about this meme. Now, when we speak about this meme here, when we say black people, I'm going to put the black people in its original context of black people. I'm going to speak about black people over here in these Americas in the Caribbean because the African peoples, by and large, only recently have identified themselves as black people. That terminology was something that was coined and birthed by we the black people here in the Americas. Right? The so-called black Americans. And when we coin that term black Americans, right, coined the term that like, black people and the whole black nomenclature. And see, we point to the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated says, we the black peoples of the world. That's 1937. 
the next big organization at that time was the UNIA and they were still under the nomenclature of Negro Universal Negro Improvement Association right now I'm not pointing out oh something's bad with that I'm talking about the stages right the evolution right the evolution the growth of consciousness right so we have to be conscious when we look at these memes right heaven is real right heaven is real it's, it's a sky I'm not talking about the fantasy of counterfeit Christianity you know you know like you don't go to heaven and and heaven is because the Bible actually contradicts that white Christianity is a lie it's insanity See, they tell you that, well, you know, you're going to go to heaven after you die. But the Bible tells you something differently. You have to be born again. How in the world are you going to be born again unless you die to your sins? At least you die. You know what I mean? You know, spiritually, according to those tenets. We're speaking about spirituality, their psycho spirituality. I'm talking about the physical death, death. But they're looking at this physical death, death. And they say, our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as is in heaven. Whoa, 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 wait. On earth, thy will be so they're praying that the will be done on earth as it is in heaven, but counterfeit whitewash Christianity teaches them 180 degree opposite of the truth of the Bible. That's why Hala Selassie and others have different testimonies about the Bible. You see, but now we as black people, to keep it real, yeah, we do have this 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 this, this bitter testimony about the Bible, but it's because of white Christianity. It's almost impossible. For, for, for the average black person to read the Bible or to read or to think about any Christian so-called theme without thinking about white folks. Come on now, let, are we going to be real or, or we're not going to be real? You want to be fake? Then, then go to another channel somewhere else. You're not going to be fake. You understand? We'll talk about what is fake and expose what is fake, right? But it's fake, right, to blame it on the Bible, on the book, vis-a-vis -vis black people when the earliest testimonies in the Americas of black people in the Bible the Bible was like was like um how can we say the Bible in the hands of black people in the early days was like kryptonite to white supremacy so they had to ban the Bible from black folks that's the facts of the matter here in the Americas right they had to ban the Bible and they had to put it under punishment of death and they extended it even so much because sometimes white people would try to, you know, those, you could say good white people, right? They would try to do a little bit of cover for the Negro. You know, they, you know, they would try to like, you know, like step between the lynch mob and the Negro. And you know what the lynch mob, the white lynch mob said, listen, you give those niggers the Bible and teach them how to read it. We're going to lynch you. We're going to kill you too. And they did. They lynched white folks as well. Of course, not in the, not, not nowhere near the numbers of the black and the brown men, women, and children that they lynched. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But still, they did. This is the facts of the matter. Right? Now, this, let's touch on another level of this particular meme right here, here, here. Because based on this meme, it's saying, well, they, white people kept the... They would have kept the Bible far away from us like they kept land and wealth away from us. Now, you're giving too much power to so-called white people, right? You're giving too much power to so-called white people. Mm. Land and wealth. Land and wealth. Ha have you ever looked up any of the, the stats, statistics, right, that do reflect more or less the reality of the matter? Or how much black wealth we have collectively or even in our various groupings? Even we as Rastafari people, we have a lot of wealth, but, you know, we have to work out this mansions kind of thing. You know what I mean? In order for the wealth to, to really be able to do something for us collectively as Rastafari. We have like mansion versus mansion, you know, in my father's house. See, because we need to look at the father's house, the beta Rastafari. You know what I mean? But have white people really kept land and wealth away from us? Have they? Have they really? Okay, look at the Africans for a moment. Let, let's, go, let's go to the so-called motherland. Let's go to the motherland. Let, let's look at Africa for a moment. Black people don't have the land. Right? Don't have the land. Now, now we know at one time, yes, during, during the high days, you know, of so-called white supremacy and colonialisms, right, schisms over the year. But we're talking about today. 
uh, right today nowadays right and see even when they gave the Africans the Bible right before they gave the Africans the Bible they first indoctrinated them right they like softened them up you know like you soften up, they you soften up a target they soften them up with white Christianity See, and, and we're talking about institution. You talk about institutional racism. Is white Christianity institutional racism? Yadin is asking. Yadin asking a question. Is white Christianity? Because when we talk about Christianity historically, from the perspective of we, the black people of the world, especially over here in this hemisphere, in the Americas and the Caribbean, we have to speak about white Christianity. Right? Because otherwise, if we just think that, well, Christianity is a bad thing. Right? Because of over here in America and some things over go back to Rome and everything, we get to find other testimonies of Christianity that are historically speaking 180 degree opposite and even stood toe to toe and faced off with the aggressive fascist forces of white Christianity. That was Benito Mussolini and the fascist invasion of Ethiopia. That was white Christianity versus what we could say for lack of a better word true christianity right that was white christianity versus true christianity or we could say black christianity but in this case black is the truth right in this context black is the truth yeah and we know how that worked out five years to the very day you, you know what i mean and yes the british had to fight too white folks had to fight too you know because of their own white brothers right that were doing evil Right, and they claim to be Christians too. You know what I mean? So basically, what Haile Selassie did is put them to the test, right, of their faith. And this is why the West has fallen away from Christianity and Christian teaching. This is this is why it's happened because it's been found to be fraudulent, or like Daniel's prophecy, right? Many many Tekelu Farisin is found to be lacking, wanting, wanting, lacking, right? But did they really keep land and wealth away from us? I point out wealth. Black people, percentage-wise, you know, for the wealth that's in the black community. How many times have you heard some of our great teachers? You know what I mean? Some of their names I like to name right now, but I don't have it all in front of me right now. But um, Claude, uh, Claude Akins is one, right? That basically speak about how these things are in our hands, but it's because of ignorance that's in our minds that our hands remain empty. You see, because the ignorance that's in our hearts and our minds, right, that our hands remain empty, right? Do they keep land away from us, right? You know, there's black peoples, right, even after, we could say, the, the, the heydays of chattel slavery, right, that own land. You know, black folks do own land, right? There's such a thing called black farmers, but you know also in our own history that a lot of our people left their land and they came into the cities. This is the same that happens in Africa. They'll leave Africa and come to Europe, go to Europe or go to America, whatnot like that. Same thing happened in the Caribbean, right? Same things happened down south. They will leave the land, right, come to the cities, you know, because of uh, financial situations, you know what I mean? You know, sometimes with very good intentions, but then they will get caught up in the system. <laughs> right, they'll get caught up in another level of the Babylonian system, you know. So, we have to check this meme right here, right? Because this meme is not right and accurate, but it's very interesting. And of course, I know a lot of people thumbs it up. In fact, even if I saw this there, I would thumbs it up too, right? If it gave me a moment to give a commentary, I'll try to give a, a, a food for thought, you know what I mean, you know. A um, little brunch, maybe a little lunch, a little lunch thought, <laughs> you know. But if white Christianity was real, see, the, this should really have said, if white Christianity and their Jesus was real, they would have kept it away from us, like the land and the wealth. But you know what they really have kept from us, in a sense? All right, but it's, it's not kept from us, but it's kind of hiding in plain sight, is the knowledge, but in order for us to learn and to grow, we're going to have to admit some things that we might have done or practiced in the past that with our best intent was not right and accurate. You know what I mean? You ever done something and, 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 and from your heart of hearts you thought, yeah, this is right. But then as you learn and grow, you recognize something is better, right? And it doesn't make you bad because you had acknowledged that before. 
But now there's something better. You understand? That has, it's like one thing led to the next, so to speak. You know what I mean? So this meme here, I really love this meme here. You know, for real, I do. But I have to get a commentary on it, right? It, it needed the commentary because the land and the wealth, right? Think about it. Anytime us as a group of, of, of brothers and sisters, you know, we could form our own kibbutz, you know what I'm saying? Our own intentional community, you know, especially based on family principles, you know, and we can go and get a plot of land. A lot of African nations, you know, would offer us that. It might be like a five or 10 year to see what we do within that time. And if we do something within that time, you know, more permanent, you could say rights to that land, that holding, that title, so to speak, will be given to us. I mean, we know the earth is jars and the fullness thereof, you know what I mean? But even Abraham, when he was in the Canaan, the African Canaan line, right, he even bought some land at that time. So it shows, even though he was told that his descendants would possess it all, so be it. You know, so we can get on a plane anytime and go to Africa, most of us, I think, right? And, and those who might have other issues, you know, there are other ways and means too. But what I'm saying right here is do they really keep this from us? Do they keep the wealth from us, right? Or do we be giving away our wealth? How come some of the poorest people of the poorest nations around the world, or, you know what I mean, that are much poorer than us even here in America? Do you know that we, even in these ghettos, with the combined wealth of the Getty OOO, right, have more wealth, right, than the majority of non so called Western industrialized European so called nations. Do you know that in African, or, I'm talking about Africa and Asia, right? You know, because South America is part of the Americas right here. So that's included, you know what I mean, you know, under our banner. You know, we are uh, Beta Israel of the West, you know. But they haven't kept the land and the wealth from us. See, that, that gets into something even worse than white Christianity. I, I must admit right there. Because at least if you're in something like white Christianity, you're looking up at what well, one brother said, this big fat white Jesus or Kaiser Borgia after a while, you're going to recognize that something ain't right after a while. Now, if you have the will, this is when they talk about people talk about free will. Well, some people will have the will to break free. Some people might not have enough free will to break free and they get stuck in in in, in white Christianity slavery. You know, cause a lot of our people in that white Christianity slavery. See they think that when we're saying this, we're saying this about what 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 the Messiah, Yeshua, Moshiach Hanotri, Jesus Christ with the truth. We're not speaking against the truth, we're speaking against Antichrist lie. But because they're so caught up, they can't discern. They don't have any discernment. Like the Bible says, they don't have any understanding. Understanding is the ability to distinguish between this and that. You know, what's the difference between these two things that are similar? So we say white Christianity, right? And we say true Christianity, we say Christianity. People think it's all the same thing, right? But that's a lack of knowledge on their behalf, right? They say that if heaven was real. So you're saying heaven is not real? Heaven is the sky. Go look it up, right? Heaven's a sky above. Now, when you put it in the religious terminology, this is where white Christianity, see? It's, it's really white Christianity. That's why we say if white Christianity was real and their Jesus, right? Kaiser Borgia, Caesar Borgia, white people would have kept it far away from black people, right? Like they did. Like they what? Like they did. Did past tense, so we're gonna have to update. We're gonna do a little meme and everything, like they did with the land and wealth. But even though they kept land and wealth away from black folks, black folks don't got land. Come on now, black folks don't have, have land. Black folks in the Caribbean, you don't have some land, you don't have your own land, you don't farm, you don't do your own food. Black people down south. Right, in some parts of the South, if you're not all caught up in the cities, like right? Hotlanta and elsewhere, right? You don't have your own land. But 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 see, our minds have changed. See, I know about my ancestors who those who came from the south and came over to the north for better, you know, for better conditions. Like many of our black people left like the East Coast, right? And went out to Kansas, 
You know, Kansas was like the promised land back in the days. Some went out to the Texas area, the mid, you know, the mid, the, the mid, the midland, the, the mid states, you know, the midland states, the heartland, they call the heartland, right? Then others went further out to California, right? Back in the days, right? That's how they got all those homes out in California. But then when they shipped all the jobs and everything off to Asia and other places, Indonesia and other places where they can South America, you know, where they can exploit the people and not pay the black people who, who are benefiting from those jobs and everything. This is where the whole gangs and drugs kind of came in, you know, along the same lines as some of the revolutionary movements. And that's what, how we got into these things. See, we can't undo, you know, like, if I see you tie a knot, if you tie, tie a knot on me and I'm, and I'm looking at you, I'm not blindfolded, but I can see you tie the knot, right? Or I see you tie another, somebody else's knot, I, I can now know how to untie the knot. This is why we go back and we say, wait, is this really real? Did white people keep the Bible far away from black people? Right? Yes. But this meme is saying that white people would have done that. But white people did do that. You see what I'm saying? White people did do that. I'm going to have to do a vid and bring up those laws. Because some folks might not know what I'm even talking about. Because they're so caught up right on the on the propaganda right you know they so caught up on the propaganda that has gone out you know on the pseudo the pseudo consciousness i call it pseudo consciousness that has gone out you know on the memes it's like a meme consciousness right they see a meme and they'll like it oh yeah and they'll repeat the meme ribbon and repeat and then when somebody comes to them with a reason they say well, well, well heaven is real they're looking at them funny like what would you mean Heaven is real. Oh, you believe that, you know, angels in the sky and after you die, you're going to, you know, go to the St. Peter or whatever and the pearly gates. Nah, nigga. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Heaven is the sky, nigga. <laughs> That's what it is. It's another word for the sky. You know what? Nothing beats a demonstration, right? All right. So here, here, here. Here's my demonstration. Here's our demonstration right here. You know how we do. Right, get to the etymos logos, the true meaning of the word, based on the historical. We could trace the evidence, the line. So this word heaven come from German, right? Hail, fine, hemel, hemel, word heaven. Uh, you know, it came from German, right? It comes from German, right? Now they don't tell you what this thing mean, right? Heaven. Let's go down here. Heaven, right? Heaven, right here. They say home of God. Right. But look at what it says the earlier, the earlier. So before it became known as the home of God, because remember, this is like old English and they were under that white Christianity. Remember the iconoclast? That's when they whitewashed all the black images, you know, when they were when they were um, hostile takeover. There was a white supremacist hostile takeover of Christianity. You hear me? A white supremacist hostile takeover. Now, earlier it meant the visible sky firmament. Let, let's just highlight that for the people so they know exactly what we're talking about right there. Boom. You see what it says? So heaven is from the etymology. That means just going to the historical. It's like um, tracing the resume. When we look at the etymology, is the resume of the word. We're looking at the resume of the word as it has actually been used like before our time and coming down to, you know, we get, get to understand how we might think it means this or we use it like this, you know? They say probably from the Proto-Germanic, right? Then they get into all this, rah, 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 rah. And then they say heaven, heaven, you see what it says, heaven, sky, right? Heaven, sky. So right here, heaven, sky, right? So look, look what it says, heaven, sky, but in the actuality, heaven is the sky. That's all, heaven is the sky. But now when you get into the, all the idea like the home of God, so from so on, you're getting into certain religious levels. I mean, and it's not just among Christianity. If I'm correct, the ancient commit to you, the Hecapetopians, right? Hecapeta, Egypta, Egypt, say, Mitzrayim, you know, ancient Egypt, they also talk about Ray, you know, his solar bark in the sky, you know what I mean, and all that about the sky and, you know, Cyrus and so forth and so on, the sun behind the sun and all of that, you know what I mean? So many different cultures look at it like that. And who knows, perhaps maybe there's something to that, right? But what heaven means in plain, simple English is the visible sky. So look at the trick right there. A lot of people in and white Christianity, right, are believing heaven in a different way, 
different than even what the Bible actually says, but different than what they can witness with their own eyes, right? That's why even the Christ and the Jesus in the Bible says, you know, like, you know, seeing see, you know, but they don't like, you know, they don't perceive. Hearing hear, but they don't understand, right? That's what happens. Now, you go down here, a covering, a covering. You know, it says, okay, look at the second paragraph. It says, the English word is attested from the late 14th century. The resume of the word heaven. As a heavenly place, a state of bliss. Right? So now you, you can tell the 14th century is like the, like the 1300s. Here's when they're adding a, a bunch of their religious ideologies. This is white folks like in Europe and elsewhere adding in their, 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 their religious you know, interpretation. What was the major religion? It was white Christianity. Ever since the iconoclast phase, and so one need to stop and say, wait, hold on for a moment. If before they whitewashed the images, the images were actually black, right, and, and represented more of what we would call black or melanated peoples, right, then what were they, we got to ask some questions about that. That means that there's a whole lost aspect of what we call Christianity that wasn't whitewashed. So we can clearly see where the whitewash comes in historically, and that's the whole iconoclast phase. Right? That's that's like a major, you could say a major um, you know, landmark historically. Right? Now the plural use in sense of sky, they say it's probably from the Ptolemaic, Ptolemaic theory of space. Right, so now we're getting into some science or even pseudoscience, Potome, Potome. Are we talking about, about back in the 300s, you know, like um, 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 Egypt, when the Greeks took over Egypt, the Potomaic theory of space as composed of many spheres. Now they even got that, the Greeks got that from the Egyptians, you know, and so forth and so on, the ancients had, right? But it is also formally, right, was used in the same sense in the singular in biblical language now see the biblical language is hebrew right so what they really are blocking people out is that people get caught up in the translation right and you remember the translation into king james like english the the language is connected to the culture and who runs the culture right is that institutional white racism white supremacy that's, that's what ran that whole times of the gentile european you know anglo-american empire kind of culture right so the biblical language now is like breaking the spell when we get into the biblical as a translation of biblical plural my shemayim shemayim right i would i will submit to you this is why those white christians right really hate on the so-called even white Jews so much, right? Because there's something about the so-called even Jewish, right? Torah observant, especially perspective, because they don't get caught up in that because they can see it like straight. You know, you can see it straight. You know what I mean? As a translation of the Hebrew plural Shemayim. Now, there's this idea of a heaven sent. You hear somebody say, oh, you are heaven sent. That come from 1640s. That means that according to this, before 1640s, Almost very rarely or not at all did anyone say heaven sent. But after 1640s, it became popular for one to say heaven sent as an adjective. Oh, you know, you are heaven sent. You know, she's a heaven sent woman. He's a heaven sent man. You know what I mean? Like he was sent from God. <laughs> well, or, or did he fall from the sky? Well, he's a meteor. She a meteor or something like that. She a rock. Is this Zeus or something like that? A comet falling from the sky? Like the Mecca rock is something like that. Is, is this what's going on right here? You know, and then we get into the heavenly, so forth and so on. So demonstration, demonstration. I hope the demonstration was clear. You know what I mean? This demonstration was clear. I'm gonna touch on the Naya Bingi. But they say listen to Naya Bingi. I say to you, all right, other Rasta man say to you, listen to Naya Bingi. But I, Ras Ayadona, say to you, listen to Ketamawi Hala Salase. Right? Give us a teaching of his majesty. Yes, I. Rastafari. So, I'm going to follow up on the Naya Bingi, right? But land and wealth, just to, just to zoom in on this point right here, just, just on the outro, land and wealth, right? That's still there for the getting. A lot of our wealth goes out of our hands because how, how our monies don't circulate. You know, our monies don't circulate. One of my brethren sent me something the other day. Um, 
Didn't want this video to be so long, but hopefully let me know, brothers and sisters, in the comments, you know, whether if you got to this particular point of the video, whether this has been instructional, you know, or helpful in some way, you know, or how it has been helpful, right? Um, what's this? What's uh, let me let me see if I can um, bring up this brother right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's on my other phone. I'm trying to transfer some data from my other phone, so I don't, I'm not too sure if I can, right? If I can get this on my phone, I would bring it up on the screen right here. But the brother said something about wealth, about yeah. It was it was it was a it was a private send, but it's on my other line. But about wealth, basically, he was just building up on the point about how wealth. You know, in our community, if you look at a lot of other like immigrants and people from, you know, poor countries and communities around the world, when they come to America, they usually start out in the black neighborhoods, right? And usually they do some service or some business or whatever it is, right? And usually they feed off of the black community and are able to garner, you know, even from small sales over you could say a period of time great wealth that they can then expand right so then they'll keep you know a, like like we saw the chinese food restaurants or talking about these these 99 five well they used to call them five and dime that shows how old i am but you know 99 cent stores you know these kind of 99 cents or dollar the, the, that's what you call it now right the dollar store i can hear somebody saying you mean the dollar store that's <laughs> yeah the dollar stores you know what i mean um yeah, so they do these kind of, or the corner stores, you know, we get the Yemenis, you know, different ones come over here. And they're able to send a, 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 a good share of wealth back home, right, from offering. I even know a Yemenis uh, a family from, from Yemen, and they have a couple of stores um, with the, like the smoke shops, you know, with the whole CBDs and all of that, you know, the gummies and, 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 and the whole shebang. You know, and they're making a good profit. But notice, they're making that profit largely off of the black community. And with the gentrification, white folks have come into the black community. So if we, listen, we got the wealth, and we got, and, and we got land, and if we need to get land, land there. Land is there, right? But now we have to ask some other questions, and we have to take the so-called white people, right, out of the equation, like the boogeyman. Right? Take the boogeyman out of the equation. You know what I mean? It's something Sizzler Kalanji said in one of his tunes. He says, my mama not a slave and my papa not a slave. My mom and my, my mother, my father not a slave. My, you know, my mother and father, I, I forget exactly how he said it, but basically my mother and father were not slaves, so I, I'm, no, I'm no slave. In other words, yes, our ancestors went through this and we recall and we never forget. You see what I'm saying? But that never forget should motivate us in a a positive and an upful and a courageous sense. You see what I'm saying? To overcome it. It's like we're kind of getting caught up on a lot of this is psyops on a certain level. You know what I mean? A lot of it's psyops because it's not even logical. Heaven is real in the sense of heaven is the visible sky. Right? White people would have kept the Bible far away from black people. Well, hold on for a moment. White people did keep the Bible. Well, why do white people keep the Bible? When, when so-called Negroes were reading the Bible for themselves, they were seeing themselves more as the Israelites, you know what I mean? And they were seeing the incentive from those areas of the scripture to resist unrighteousness and wickedness. And they saw the enslavement and slavery as wickedness. It was no turn the other cheek because these were not our brothers. These were our down presses. You see what I'm saying? And they came in the name of Jesus, right? Like it says, many shall come in my name, right? And say that I am, say, say, say that they are Christ, right? <laughs> and they shall deceive many. So when our people, right, first in the earliest part of our captivity, when we looked at the Bible, we still had our right mind. So when we could understand the language, we had a different reaction to the message in the Bible, but that reaction to the institutionalized enslavement of white supremacy was violent, right? And was revolutionary, right? And was courageous. And they said, nah, 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 nah. And this is why they issued, you know, the law and decree that to teach a black person to read the Bible was death 
for the person who taught the black person and for the black person who learned to read the Bible. And if a black person even had a Bible in their possession in the earliest times of our enslavement, it was death. It was, you know what I mean? But what they did in the meantime was have the slave Bible, which was a redacted version, an edited version, a hyper edited version of the Bible, right? That had all of these like warm, fuzzy, it was like warm, fuzzy, like docile, right? It gave an impression, right, of, of the Christianity they wanted us to have as a docile one. But notice this, that these same white Christians, when it was necessary for them to fight against somebody, right, or use force, or even have this battle in the name of the Lord, they did so. And many times they attribute their victory to the Lord and their Christianity. But then the Christianity that they gave to us, you see what I'm saying? Or that they indoctrinated our ancestors with. But it was stages, right? Now, the last part of the comment, as I just already just went over just briefly, the land and wealth, right? The land and the wealth. Yes, initially, right? Initially, they did these things. But now is a different day. We're in the 21st century. We got to recognize, you know, we're in the 21st century. I mean... <laughs> Oh man, there's more I want to say, but I don't want to make this too too long or too long a video. But definitely have to pick up on these themes right here. There's a lot of opportunities that we have, and I'm speaking about you know as a collective or, or or ones and ones working together. Many hands make light work. If we can have a covenant and agreement as a group of ones, we can achieve a lot of things. This is what business is all about. You know what I mean? But there has to be some common denominator. And we need to get off the common denominator of post-traumatic slave mental mental disorders. Right? Because a lot of our people are into this post-traumatic slave mental disorders. And sometimes some of these memes, they contribute to the post-traumatic slave mental disorders. Right? Because they're saying a lot of yik-yak, saying a lot of things that's making us emote. Making us operate off of our... You know, off of our, we could say, the right brain, right? The hot, the hot part, right? But not off of the cooler part. Not off of the more logical part, right? The more rational part, right? Give us the teaching of His Majesty. Because we don't want no devil's philosophy. So some say, listen to Naya Bingi. We say, listen to Haile Selassie. Rastafari. Yes, I.